Gen Gators Power Systems is the area's leading Kohler standby generator solution, specializing in maintenance, repair, and installation on all major brands, from gas to diesel and 2KW to 2000. Home or commercial, our team has you covered. Our factory certified technicians and installers are highly trained to provide response and repair when you need it the most. We service what we sell, period. Trust the Gen Gators where we sink our teeth in the service. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. I'm excited. Check out this set, Jay. Let's sh let's show the audience right here. I got five bananas next to me. Jay, you have a close up of this by any chance? I'm almost scared because they have gadgets. I don't want to touch them. <laughs> they they kind of looks like a finger would would fit in there, and I'm very curious as to what this is all about. They got electrodes hooked to the bananas. They got all kind of things. And this shows about girls who code. So I am super curious. I'm going to find out what it's all about. But I want the young ladies to start off by introducing themselves. And tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you and where are you from? Hi, my name is Addison. And I'm from Homer, Louisiana. Um, I... Um, and what school do you go to? I go to Broadmoor and I'm going to Evergreen. Okay. So you graduated. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going lateral or going to Broadmoor's uh, elementary? Evergreen's what, a junior high? Yes, sir. Okay. See, I got that right, didn't I? <laughs> and I play for Alpha Omega on the basketball team. Wow. Cool deal. Any good? Um, you got a good three-point shot? You like to be under the board rebounding and putting the shot back up? Okay, somebody got to do that. All right, next. Um, hi, my name is Zyla, and I am from Homer, Louisiana, too. I'm also going to Evergreen Junior High, and like I like to do theater and singing. I'm I'm gonna get to talk to theater for like people who are really good at acting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you're a good actress. I guess so. You'll be <laughs> you gonna be the big time one day. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Well, as long as you keep that attitude, you're gonna get there, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, and we're gonna talk with Miss Ashley Jefferson, the camp leader. And the head teacher. Now, can you make sense out of what I'm looking at right now? Because I'm trying to figure it out and my brain hasn't put it all together yet. But tell us what this is all about. Yes. Yeah, so I'm Ashley Jefferson and I'm a counselor at Terrebonne High School, but I'm also the camp leader or, um, for Girls Who Code Summer Session. And what you're looking at is a connection of circuits that the campers learn to code using a makey makey and a scratch program and through this they can make tons of creative innovations if you will and they have a great time meeting other girls learning about sisterhood and being brave and thinking outside of the box so that's what we promote to them and want them to come out of the camp learning that they can do anything that they want to. Whatever their mind is set on, all they have to do is be determined and work hard. Thinking outside the box is proper for this because I'm looking at a box yes. right now, and that's all pretty cool. I want to bring in Ms. Leah Brown, and she is the public affairs manager of Chevron Gulf of Mexico, the, the business unit. And tell us how you all get involved with this and why this is so exciting for you. Sure. Um, so this is one of my favorite camps, activities that we do. Uh, we've worked with Terrebonne Foundation for Academic Excellence on this program um, since about 2019. The young ladies are absolutely phenomenal. 
Um, so they're immersed in a camp. This one just concluded about 30 young ladies uh, from around Lafouche, Terrebonne areas, um, and they learn coding. And it really is about ensuring that we are helping to train the next generation of uh, STEM workers and professionals and ensuring that we're doing it in the areas where we live and work. This is an extremely important operational area for us. Um, this community is extremely important to us. We live and we work here. And so we want to make sure that all segments of the population continue to be educated and represented. Um, in addition, this camp is just so much fun. The young ladies are going to tell you about their projects and their experiences. And when you see their eyes light up and see how much they enjoy working with the programming and creating these projects, um, it just makes you want to participate. Yeah, can we bring up that picture again? Because I'm curious. I, I hadn't studied it yet, but is this uh, sector mostly driven by women? This is when you go to these coding sectors, is this mostly a woman? Uh, sector? So historically, um, computer science, coding, those areas are typically male dominated industries. And so that's the reason that we really are trying to put emphasis on how do we recruit, attract, retain young ladies in these fields. See, I would have thought it would have been mostly women working in those fields, but you're telling me just the opposite. Yeah. So that, I'm learning something <laughs> new. There we go for sure. And, and you said you had how many? 30? Roughly 30 young ladies. And is it a hard, uh, how hard is it to learn? And I'm gonna come back to the girls in a second, but maybe I'll ask y'all, yeah. how hard is it to learn coding? I mean, it's not that hard, but like, yeah, like it's okay. Like if you can do it really good, like if you really got at coding, like it'd be easier for you, but some others like you're not, it, might not, it might not be as easier for them as for other people. But y'all grew up in the technology world. <laughs> so I guess, it does it come easier for y'all? It's really not as hard as I expected it to be, but it's kind of like you just have to pay attention and just get, grasp the concept because Miss Ashley, she really did a great job explaining all of it. Is she tough? Yeah. I but that's think. good, huh? That's good. Sometimes you're looking for tough one. Not, not so much tough, but she's strict by the rules, right? You can't play around in her class, right? No. Well, that's good. Aren't y'all looking for that? Yeah. Yeah? Well, mostly. <laughs> you got to have structure, right? All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break, pay a few bills, and we're going to come back and learn a little more. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, Which sir. one of y'all knows how to sing? <laughs> I'm just kidding with y'all. We'll be right back while I eat a banana, okay? We'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs> Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. back girls who code that's the topic and i'm still very curious about the bananas that are sitting right next to me here on the news desk but this is pretty cool and i want to come back to the students so addison we'll start with you tell me tell me about a typical class and then tell me about the overall aspect and how that sort of fits with your personality um so a typical class would be you walk in in the morning and we have probably like a little pastry or something for breakfast. And then we just get to like play around for about, say, 15 to 30 minutes. And then we'll start and normally they'll have a speaker come around 9, 10 ish. And then we'll we'll do like a little activity with them and um. One of my favorite activities is when we made bracelets um, with coding computers. Um, co well, they take in information through a code of zeros and ones. So we got to look at our initials and um, pick two colors in the spacer and every zero would be a color and every one would be a color. And then we would 
do our initials in code. And then after that, we'd have um, some lunch. We had some really cool sponsors for lunch. Like we had Downtown Joe's and Chick-fil-A and um, Subway. So I asked you about coding and you telling me about pastries <laughs> yep. and all this food. So they bribing y'all to learn, right? All this good food. That's pretty cool. All right, so Zyla, let me come to you. Coding when you zeros and ones and all that. <laughs> yeah. Does that get confusing? I mean, it can get, get like really confusing, like depending on like it's like a lot of numbers and like science, a lot of numbers. So but yeah. when you're learning it and, and what is your age group? Oh, 12. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like six. I think our youngest something? person was I think seven or eight. eight. Seven to eight. So let me ask Ms. Jefferson, is that about right? Eight? Ten. Oh, ten, ten was our youngest oh. camper. Ten's the youngest. So usually prop, uh, from fifth to eighth grade okay. would be um, the students that come to the camp. So is it your job, because numbers can be very intimidating, mm -hmm. is it your job to sort of mellow it and smooth it out for them to learn? Absolutely. So that's why we have the lunch and the icebreaker activities, the speakers, you. so they can get comfort comfortable, get to know one another, and it won't be as intimidating. Yeah. And Leah, from a corporate standpoint, looking at all this, what does it do to an organization like you work for to, to see this? Because you got to see it. They, they probably pick it up pretty quick. And it's got to excite y'all that the next generation, you know, sometimes groups out there like to pick on the new generations and saying this and that, but they got a lot of knowledge that we didn't have at that age. They definitely do. It's uh, inspiring both professionally and personally. Um, next year, camp will likely happen again. And so, you know, as they do outreach to different companies to come and either participate or sponsor, I encourage folks to go and check it out. Um, when you see the young ladies in action, when you look at their projects, uh, it definitely makes you feel a whole lot better about what's to come from an employer perspective. Uh, these young ladies, they will be our future workforce. And so it's extremely important that we're doing our part to help get them ready and prepared and you know, we talked a little bit about numbers and math. Another thing for students to remember, um, things that are not familiar or that you don't practice, yes, they can seem foreign and intimidating or hard, but that's relative, right? You mm -hmm. know, just like an athlete, uh, basketball, football, soccer, really hard if you don't practice. No right. difference with math and numbers. If you practice and you become more proficient, same thing with coding and other STEM disciplines. All right, so let me ask Addison and Zyla, when do you know you get it? When? When do you sense during the class that at one point, probably the first few classes while you're eating your pastry and drinking <laughs> a cup of coffee, it's hard to figure out, but then all of a sudden it registers and you go, I got this. Was there a moment for you like that? Definitely. Um, I had a little trouble with it, but coding is basically trial and error. Absolutely. So you just have to experiment and I knew that I got it when I could do it really, really easy. So you were rolling through it at that point? Yes, sir. I mean, when you did it, did you get up and like do a little dance <laughs> that you got it out? What, what was it like? Um, I just... I it was internal, internal yeah. confidence that you had. Zala, when did you realize it? Um, like whenever like I didn't ask for help anymore and like I just I could just do it by myself without anyone like telling me what to do. I was like, oh my gosh, it was that simple all this time? <laughs> I'm like... Wow. Yeah, I was like, it got like much easier for me, and like it was like, easier to do without asking for any help with anyone, and like it's easier. It was, it was like easier easier to work in groups with other people. So like like we have to um, work in groups with people, like to meet people and like talk about them and um, like yeah, have fun with them and stuff. Okay, and uh, let me, Miss Jefferson. When we went to school, well, you might have had it. You younger than me, of course. <laughs> we didn't have all these computers and everything, and we didn't have cell phones. We had party lines. Do y'all know what party lines are? <laughs> no, when you pick up the phone in your house, there's four other houses on the same phone line. <laughs> I mean, that's terrible, isn't it? But that's how we grew up. So do you have to sort of mesh to their level? Definitely, because as you say, we're getting older. So a lot of things that they talk about, the language that they use, it's foreign. <laughs> So we have to get to know some things and ask a lot of questions of them so that we can be familiar with 
the things that they like and to know for, for the next camp what works and what doesn't work. I want to thank you all for coming on board. It's been a pleasure. And uh, Leah, thank you for, for you all getting you. involved in the youth around here. And Miss Jefferson, thank you so much for taking interest. All right, I'm going to ask right now uh, Addison and Zyla to stand up, please. And I've been looking at these bananas the whole show with electrodes on them. Okay, people. All right, so we're gonna y'all gonna show us how this works. Yes. I mean, I'm I'm curious. I've been curious the whole show. So show me how it works. So inside this box, we have a panel. <laughs> with all of the wires connected. And then this is our earth. So you slide your finger into here and i've coded um my computer to where you can like the minion moves around okay. and um that's where the sound comes from okay. so like say so i touch this one the gray one it's the pretty sure like the left arrow i'll touch it and it says banana and then this banana. One. banana 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 so basically, when you put your finger in here, it's just closing the circuit so that it can make noise. So y'all learning about electricity, too. Yes, sir. Or circuitry. All right, let's try it one more time for us. Banana. 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 That sounds like a bunch of aliens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zali, you want to add to that? Um, well, yeah, what she said, basically, like, the wires like they have to like go all the way through at like, the circuits and like to produce energy because like we're conductors so, like we like put the um our energy goes inside of the little metal thingy what's it called the little hole for your ring finger yeah the, yeah like it conducts all the energy until they call it the socket yeah the socket. It looks like. the socket yeah <laughs> it's like all the energy goes from the computer into the wires and like once you put like your body in like in the um socket like the energy goes through your body and like whenever you press a banana it makes that noise okay it completes the circuit yeah but we encourage people at home do not put your finger in socket <laughs> yeah, do all right all right we'll see you on the next show don't go away